Hi everyone, um, welcome to this session. Um, we're really pleased to see you here today. Um, my name is Beth Pitt and I'm here with my colleagues Rob and Paco and we're going to be talking about building open research community and values with the Global OER Graduate Network, GoGN. So thanks so much for joining us um, and I hope you're having a great conference so far. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to be talking about the community of care that we've developed um, particularly over the past two years and in light of obviously the COVID-19 pandemic and the way that this has changed what we do as a network. And we're gonna be exploring the different ways that we've done this. And really importantly, we're gonna be hearing from our members as well as part of this presentation. So what we'll be doing is talking about what we did, how we did it, and talk a bit about the open values and practices um, as well. And as you can see here, we're going to be kind of going through different aspects of um, what we've been doing as well. We're going to be taking a look at the equity, diversion and inclusion. So Paco will talk a bit about that. And Rob will also talk a bit about our collaborative research publications. So what is GoGN? So GoGN, as I mentioned at the start of this presentation, stands for Global OER Graduate Network. We were founded in 2013. So almost 10 years ago by the late Fred Mulder at the OU in the Netherlands. We're funded and supported by the Hewlett Foundation and we currently have 138 members and alumni based in 40 countries around the world. In this phase um, we have a focus on building our membership particularly in the global south and since 2018 32 members have completed their doctorate. And as you can see here, the aims of GoGN are to raise and really raise the profile of our membership and of research into open education, offer support for those working in this space, um, conducting doctoral research in this area, promoting equity and inclusion, and also developing openness as a process of research and encouraging open research practices. So, who are the GoGN team? So as you can see here, um, this is the team. Um, uh, we're led by Professor Martin Weller. Um, there's myself um, and Rob and Paco, and we're also supported by Kylie that you can see on the right-hand side. So this is the uh, GoGN team. So what changed over the course of the pandemic? So as you may be aware, um, uh, the focus prior to this was really on our face-to-face -face workshop, which we would hold annually um, in conjunction um, with a major conference. So we would hold a workshop for a day, two days before a major open education conference, hold webinar sessions, and also have quite a wide um, developed process on, uh, developed presence even on social media as well. So what changed really, obviously, like many, um, uh, uh, organizations, we shifted to online events only um, going forward. And we kind of increased the variety of these. So one of the things that we'll hear a little bit about from our um, members in a moment um, is we changed and offered a wider variety of online events, including new member research specials, really kind of trying to make, uh, making people feel part of the network who've just joined, giving people the opportunity to share what they're working on, we also increased support for conferences and memberships so reclaim hosting membership of alt supporting um, our members to participate in conferences such as open ed and OE global co-production of community resources and we'll hear a little bit more about that shortly fellowship scheme to support an increasing number of alumni as i mentioned a moment ago we're approaching our 10th uh, anniversary so obviously a number of um, our membership obviously as people go through their phd and become alumni once they've completed their doctoral studies um, where next what what um what could we offer people to support them um in their in their next phase so we have fellowship scheme and um, paco will tell us a little bit more about that in a moment and also increase visibility at online and face-to-face -face hybrid open education conferences, as I mentioned. Paco will also talk a little bit about our diversity, equity and inclusion work as well. So moving on, as I mentioned, um, 
this has really been an iterative process and involves listening to our membership and trying out different types of support. You can see here that 81% of respondents, so these are our member and alumni in our 2021 survey, felt that the network supported them very well. And this is an increase on 71% on in our 2020 survey. And we'll be surveying our membership again shortly. So look out for um, our annual survey results in December at our end of year celebration result, uh, event. So we're gonna take a deeper look now at our survey feedback, feedback over the last couple of years to kind of reveal some of the, the um, the values highlighted through our membership feedback. And these are taken from our 2020 and 2021 annual reports. You can find these on the website um, if you wanna take a closer look and also um, maybe explore uh, some of the survey results in more depth. So starting off here, uh, these two quotes really encapsulate representation and commitment to sharing. Um, you can see in the first one here from one of our current GoGN members, they say, I love that you reached out to me about presenting at one of the webinars. I don't think I would have volunteered at this point in my research. This is a really um, great piece of um, feedback for us. This is about kind of encouraging our membership to be involved, um, particularly our new members. Um, how can we best serve our different um, membership? Um, I'm talking at the end of September, we had another of our uh, new member research specials yesterday, really um, getting our members, encouraging them to share their research and supporting them to do that with the network. The second quotation here is around the commitment to sharing. So you can see here, um, we have alumni uh, feedback saying hugely valuable emotional support and affirmation of our area of research was available for mentors throughout the journey. And they go on to talk about opportunities to connect and give back a welcome. So this is something that comes out, um, has come out in, in other feedback as well that we've received and we'll see in a moment around the emotional support that the network gives, but also that people, once they've completed their doctoral studies, are really looking for opportunities to kind of give back, as this um, uh, alumni respondent says here, um, which is really fantastic that people feel that commitment to the network and commitment to sharing. The second set of quotations here from the survey that I wanted to um, draw on illustrate again the emotional um, support but also equity and representation. So we can see here in the first, uh, first um, quote here from a GoGen member, they say, I suddenly do not feel alone in my doctoral journey. It has encouraged me to submit more academic writing for consideration and nudge me along in my studies. So one of the things that it was touched on in the previous slide is that obviously we're a global network and we're connecting um, people working um, on open education topics and they may be the only person in their institution um, doing that. So that kind of support and connection um, as this person says here, um, they don't feel alone in that journey, um, which is really fantastic to hear that we're, we're supporting them in that way. They also kind of mention about the academic writing and as Rob will talk about in a moment, um, the opportunities to kind of get involved with collaborative writing as part of GoGN, but also other ways of um, uh, sharing um, research. So we've had Wikipedia, editing training um, and we've been running editor thorns or we're starting to run editor thorns going forward to support improving open education articles on Wikipedia uh, going forward. The second quote here is around equity and representation and someone talks here about the network itself, the strong human bonds amongst its diverse international members and how this member says it's the strongest asset that we have as GoGN. So I think this is really um, uh, fantastic to hear that, that the network, you know, is the bonds and connections that people make um, through being part of GoGN. I'm now gonna hand over to Rob, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about the collaborative work um, and research reports. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Beck. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Rob and I lead the uh, collaborative research outputs for this phase of GoGM. Um, 
doing these kind of things is a relatively new activity for us. It's only been in the last uh, sort of two, three years that we've been doing these kind of um, collaborations. And part of the idea was to give people more experience of exploring and navigating the world of openness together sort of as a network, but also as a function of open educational practice and as a way to um, coordinate and share things that typically PhD researchers don't necessarily share. So um, starting with the research methods handbook, for instance, uh, the idea here was to provide a very accessible guide to doctoral level research methods. If you have any experience with uh, supervision of doctoral students uh, or of research in general, it's often methodology that is the thing that people feel least confident with and least comfortable with. Um, and so part of the idea that we had with this was to um, get people to share things they wouldn't normally necessarily share about how their research was going and what kind of methods were effective, where did they hit issues or stumbling blocks. Normally when re research is published, um, the method section has the kind of um, the for final, final consumption um, presentation on it. Um, and in a way we were interested in exploring uh, this as an idea of open practice. Um, the research methods handbook was very well received and um, it's had many thousands more downloads than we anticipated it would have based on the size of our membership. And um, I think this reflects a wider need for uh, research guidance way beyond just open education. Um, but I feel that by making things open and accessible, it definitely made it quite a successful uh, volume. Um, following year, we published the Conceptual Frameworks Guide, which is um, very much a kind of sister publication, which focuses not so much on methods, but on conceptual frameworks and theories and how they're used in research. And again, the members all shared their own experiences of the, how things like conceptual frameworks and theoretical frameworks have operated in their own research. Um, and again, as an exercise in sharing, it was quite successful. Uh, in addition to these kind of flagship publications, we have the research review, which we publish each year. And here we give uh, people the opportunity to review some recent publications in uh, open education research. And the idea here is partly to have that um, experience while you're still a doctoral student, but also, as, again, as an open educational practice to build a collective understanding of what's going on at the cutting edge of research and explore the potential for network leverage um, and you know can we can we all benefit if we operate as a network rather than a collection of individuals we also publish an annual review of um, activity in the GoGM network uh, which comes out at the end of each year and um, I feel that in terms of our theme of a community of care these kind of collaborations have been quite successful in helping members to feel part of something bigger and also um, having a focus, uh, which hopefully helps people in their doctoral research and beyond. So that's the work we've been doing in this strand. Thanks. Thanks so much, Rob. Also want to highlight before handing over to Paco about uh, our special GoGN issue of the Journal of Interactive Media and Education, uh, JIM. Um, so you can find articles from uh, across the network in this uh, special collection. So please do uh, check that out. I'm gonna hand over now to um, Paco, who's gonna tell us more about the work we've been doing around equity, diversity and inclusion and the fellowships. Thanks so much, Paco. Thank you very much, Beck. So the project uh, in this case, the EDI phase, um, tries and is still going on trying to identify how open research communities such as Goji and can be more diverse equitable and inclusive. And uh, this project is uh, being uh, led by uh, uh, Karina Bosu, and it has had uh, two phases and one implementation, which is currently going on. The first phase of this project uh, was focused on open educational practices and open education in uh, Africa. And find, findings from, the, from this stage uh, has helped to identify for a second phase. Basically, in this first phase, uh, it was led by colleague Judith uh, Petem, and include an interview with eight, eight experts in the area in the African context. While phase two uh, was carried out by Bibian Vladimirsky uh, in early 2020. Uh, in this case, it happened to be in between the pandemic, so plans had to be changed, but uh, 
she had the opportunity to interview 12 experts from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Uruguay, and building some guidelines and ideas such as uh, raising awareness of the global zones within the OJO initiatives, uh, as well helping uh, global south scholars uh, or early career PhD students to produce papers of uh, high quality in English, uh, as well assisting in the proofreading of papers or articles and uh, promoting and holding theoretical discussions of open education in the regions. Uh, the possibility to uh, support and attend conferences and expand in the global south, um, as well as offering virtual spaces and facilitating, uh, in that case, the, the difficult communication sometimes uh, for traveling, and as well providing and mentoring uh, those students who might not be uh, that fluent in uh, use of a second uh, language such as English as well in terms of uh, promoting and having a uh, more uh, present of GoGN in the Global South. And uh, following uh, uh, that, uh, those ideas, uh, we started the Colliga program early this year, uh, trying to connect uh, mentors and mentees uh, in order to support and, uh, those who wanted to produce content in English language for conferences, etc. Unfortunately, uh, there wasn't a huge demand in this case. It was uh, difficult. Uh, I think uh, mostly, in, and the focus in this case was the Global South in uh, Latin America. So uh, understanding that people are really busy. So basically, we have changed the focus of the Colliga in order to produce a handbook that synthesizes all those guidelines from phase one, phase two, and consider next steps to join other voices from the Global South. Next slide, please. In terms of the fellowships, the uh, fellowship scheme uh, uh, has already been finished and uh, it aimed to support GoGN alumni after finishing their PhD. And the idea for those fellows that you can see in the screen uh, in three different phases, they could take different uh, activities. Uh, they could decide that they wanted to undertake a piece of research that was tar uh, targeted in OER, OEP or related research. Maybe overview of where we are in a region, uh, identif identification of strategic events, fostering connections with the uh, networks and promote GoGN. And uh, the idea and the expectation from them was to produce uh, a report at the end of the fellowship and three, uh, in many cases have been more block uh, inputs in the GoGN website. And uh, currently, so we have those three uh, uh, cohorts uh, with the, they have a space of six months to work on their proposal. And they have provided as well feedback and shared experiences and have, have the opportunity to present in a conference. And we currently have all the reports back and we are currently producing that uh, handbook that uh, we will release with the experiences from all uh, the fellows. Thanks so much, Paco. So moving on now to OER 22. Um, and as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, um, pre-pandemic, we would have a kind of annual event that was obviously being on hold. Well, earlier this year, um, we decided to kind of explore face-to-face -face events again, and we brought together um, a number of GoGN members and alumni to London for OER 22, where we were co-chairs, um, GoGN were co-chairs at that conference. So this was really an opportunity for us to, um, to see whether people wanted to come um, and be part of a face-to-face -face event. And um, it was really great to see, um, to see everyone and to hold this kind of one day workshop prior to the conference. So we had 29 sessions um, involving the team members and alumni across um, across OER 22. There were 25 non-team sessions, including a showcase, um, which featured uh, lightning presentations from uh, our members and alumni, um, uh, as well as an end of conference plenary. We also had 20 individual GoGNers presenting across the three days. So it was really fantastic uh, to be involved in this way in OER 22. And we're looking forward to um, future face-to-face events and bringing um, colleagues together again. 
So hopefully as we've moved through this presentation, we've kind of touched on different aspects of GoGN's community of care. And hopefully you can see that openness is really at the heart of GoGN um, in terms of what we do, our practices and the kind of values that we have, our commitment to sharing, um, improving representation, equity and diversity, criticality and increasing autonomy. I now want to just briefly touch on how GoGN as an example could maybe inform other contexts. So this is really a kind of lessons learned um, part of the presentation really. Um, so one of the things is about understanding your audience or audiences and that their needs may change. So as I mentioned, people are at different stages of their doctoral journey when they join um, the network and as they go through their doctoral studies, obviously their needs um, uh, change and this as we mentioned earlier, in particular in relation to the fellowships, we have a growing number of alumni um, in the network, as well as obviously the impact of COVID on people's personal and professional lives. So really there's um, always to be very aware um, of people's individual needs and circumstances and that they may change um, and that they will change over time. One of the other things to bear in mind is also um, we're a network, we're a global network and being very conscious of which voice or voices are not in the room or, you know, looking at different ways to engage with different um, uh, members um, uh, and alumni. Tailoring opportunities um, and deliberately seeking feedback as well. So through the survey, mentioned the kind of annual survey, we try and be open to feedback and kind of encourage people to reach out if they have suggestions or um, have feedback, um, good or bad, about what we're doing. And also to respond to that in an agile um, way, listening to, um, and adjusting what we're doing according to feedback that we're getting um, from our members and alumni. So really it's about having a not one size fits all um, approach and having a diverse offering. We mentioned the kind of range of different things that we um, uh, offer members now and obviously different things appeal to different people um, as well. So it's about offering different ways to engage with and be part of a network or, um, or initiative. And then also raising the profile of the network and its members. So um, looking for different ways to kind of do that. And we talked a bit about, um, about some of those through this presentation and connecting GoGN to the wider open education community and beyond. So how can you get involved? So firstly, if you're watching this and you are a doctoral student um, working on an open education topic, please do um, join the network. We would love to have you as a member. Um, so please do reach out to us. Um, you can see uh, the address and our Twitter handle um, as well here. Um, and there'll be further details at the end of this presentation. Um, if you supervise doctoral students or you're aware of doctoral students working on open education topics, please spread the word. Um, Likewise, if you're watching this, well, you're an expert um, and you have an interest in open education, we have a friends and um, experts list. Uh, so you can keep in touch with what we're doing um, and opportunities to be involved. So please do join um, the experts and friends list uh, as well. We're also, as I mentioned, several points in the presentation approaching our 10 year anniversary, and we would love to hear how we can better serve um, the wider open education community um, as well going forward. So please do um, use this hashtag or reach out to contact us and let, you know, let us know your thoughts. Also look out next year for further activities around um, the anniversary as well. So thank you so much for listening. Um, it's been really great to share more about what we've been doing with you and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the conference. Thank you.